and Merry Christmas! I'm so glad you decided to spend it with me. In this service, we're gonna be discovering God's greatest gift. One of the things you're gonna need is gonna be your Christmas Eve kit. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. I put a link in the description box down below so that you can print out your own at home. If you do already have yours, go ahead and empty it out. Ask an adult to help you put together your animal ears and tails. Pause the video and I'll see you back in just a moment. Welcome back. As you can see, I already took out my wreath and I also punched out all the characters that are gonna be in our story. Maybe you've heard this story before. Maybe this is your thousandth time hearing it. But whether it's your first or your thousandth, I hope that you find something new, meaningful, and just have fun exploring the Christmas story. We're gonna be exploring it by making a craft, putting on costumes, and also praising God through song and dance. If you haven't already, you can click the link in the description box down below to watch all my tutorials for all the songs that we're gonna be doing in this service. And speaking of songs, it's gonna be time for our first song, Joy to the World. We're gonna do two verses, but before that, I'm gonna need to clear some space and then I'll see you in just a moment. you guys. Our story tonight is a real story and it really happened to real people except that it happened about 2,000 years ago which is before Santa Claus or his reindeer. Our story starts with a girl named Mary. Now Mary was about 14 or 15 years old and this was happening on an ordinary day. And she was going around doing her chores. And you know what? Let's play a quick game of charades. I'll act out her chore. You guess what it is. Ready? Good job. It's sweeping the floor. All right. How about this one? Washing dishes, good job. Now this last one might be a little tricky. This one was grabbing water from the well. I told you it was trickier. So Mary was going around her chores either sweeping the floor or grabbing water from the local well. And suddenly, an angel appeared in front of her. Greetings, Mary, you who have found great favor with God. Which means God thought that she was a really great person. You have been selected to give birth to a son. You are to name him Emmanuel which means God with us. 
He will be Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Which means he's the savior of the world. Let it be done to me as, as you have foretold. Which means predicted. Can you imagine being in Mary's place? You were having a regular, ordinary day, and suddenly an angel appears to you and tells you you're going to give birth to a son. And not just any son, the Savior of the world. And I'm sure Mary was at a loss. She didn't know what to do. She wasn't even married yet. But she did trust in God. And she trusted in God so much that she knew no matter what happened, God was going to work it for her good. In this next song, I invite you to just watch and think about how you might have reacted if you were in Mary's place.
so glad Mary decided to trust God. And you know, whenever we're afraid or we don't know what to do, we just have to think of Mary. And she helps to remind us that whenever we're feeling that way, we can pray to God and ask for His help. The next character in our story is a man named Joseph. And Joseph was very special to Mary. He was going to be her future husband. And he got really nervous when he saw that Mary was pregnant. He knew that the rest of the villagers wouldn't understand. And he was terrified for her. So he had made it up in his mind that he wasn't going to marry her, but he was going to send her away to another village to start over. But the night after he decided this, he had a dream. And in that dream, he was visited by the angel. Now to see the angel, we all have to first <gasps> go to sleep. Um. Joseph, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the son she will bear is conceived by the Spirit of God. He is going to be the Messiah, the one who will save all people. Joseph dreamed about an angel. It was amazing. God spoke to him in a dream. And so he told Joseph that if you will trust me, I promise everything will be okay. And so Joseph did trust God and he took Mary home to be his, be his wife. Now in those days, they didn't have a president ruling the country. This was the great Roman Empire. And the empire had an emperor as their ruler. And this particular emperor was named Caesar Augustus. And Augustus wanted to know how many people are living in my empire. And so he decreed that a census should be taken, which meant that every man had to go to his hometown to register himself and the amount of people living with him. And so Joseph had to go to his hometown of Bethlehem, which is also the city of David. It's the city of David because that is the birthplace of King David. And Joseph had to go there because he was the great, 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 many great grandson of King David. And so Joseph took Mary, his wife, and their donkey and rode 90 miles to Bethlehem. So we're going to pause the story really fast and we're going to play a quick game. In your kits, you should have a donkey waistband and tail. So the goal of the game is one person will be a donkey and everyone else will try to get the tail from the donkey. It's kind of like reverse pin the tail on the donkey. So after 90 seconds, if no one has gotten the tail from the donkey, pick someone new and try again. Make sure that you don't crash into anything. Have fun, and I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> that was so much fun. So when they finally got to Bethlehem, it was so crowded. I mean, there were so many people that there was no room left anywhere. There was no spare bedroom, not even space in the living room for them to sleep. But one innkeeper took pity on them and said, You can have my stable if you want to. And so they walked into the stable and it was not smelling too great. Ooh, it's, it smells bad. And oh, I think I just stepped in some poop. But in the stinky, smelly, dirty stable, Jesus came into the world. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and placed him in a manger. Oh. 
Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the So now we're halfway through the story. So we have Mary and Joseph, baby Jesus, and one of the animals they may have found inside the stable. Just outside of Bethlehem, there were these beautiful wide open fields full of delicious grass. And there, that is where all the shepherds would take their flock. And shepherds tend to care for what kind of animal? Right, they care for sheep. So we're gonna pause and play another game called Shepherd Says. Now, if you know how to play Simon Says, then you'll know how to play this game. So he or she will tell his flock, Shepherd Says, clap your hands. So everyone then should clap their hands. But if he or she says, touch your head, don't touch your head because he or she did not say, shepherd says. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you in just a moment. How do we do? Are we good listeners? Well, while the shepherds were keeping watch over their flock at night, yet another angel appeared and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For unto you this day, in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be your sign. You will find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angels, a whole host of angels appeared. There were so many and they were all praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. So let's be like the angels and sing our next song, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Suddenly, as the angels had appeared, they vanished. And all that was left was the empty night sky. So the shepherds looked at one another and said, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that we have been told about. And so they raced each other all the way until they finally found the place where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in the manger. And they fell down and they worshipped him. When they were done, they went racing through the streets of Bethlehem, singing and praising God. And all who heard were amazed. Let's be like the shepherds and sing our next song, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come, ye, O come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord sing choirs of angels sing in exaltation oh sing all ye citizens of heaven in our story, we're going to put a pause on Bethlehem. Now, while Jesus was being formed and then when he was born, there was a star that appeared. Now, this star wasn't twinkle, twinkle, little star. No, this star was a big star. It was so huge and so bright that you could see it not only at nighttime, but also during the day. And no matter where Jesus went, it always followed him and was over the place where he was. And there were in the east some men, some magi, who saw the star rising. At first they were confused. They had spent their entire lives studying and learning and reading everything they could. And so they went back to their books and looked and looked and finally found that this star meant that the Savior of the world, the King of the Jews, had been born. And so they rode on a camel's back to seek out where Jesus was. Now, we don't actually know how many there were. We do know that there is at least more than one. But we usually say that there were three because we know that there were three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we're going to pause again and play our third and final game. And this one is going to be a form of hide and seek. So in your house, I want you to find something that is either shiny or the same color as gold. Something that smells as beautiful as frankincense. And something that can be used like a lotion or an ointment, like myrrh. Once you have these three objects, one person 
is going to hide them in the room where you currently are. Everyone else, close your eyes until it's all clear. And then find the gifts that are hidden around your room. Just like all the wise men were seeking out to find Jesus. I'll see you in just a moment. What a whirlwind of a story. We started out with Mary, a scared young woman. And we talked about angels and animals, wise men and a carpenter, a brilliant star and a lowly manger. But this gift isn't complete yet. We also want to tie it off with a bow. and add a label to it. Now this label is interesting because it doesn't say who it's to. It only says who it's from. It's from God. It is God's greatest gift. Jesus was God's greatest gift to you, to me, and the entire world. And the Bible says that Mary took all of these experience, she gathered them up and treasured them in her heart. So I invite you to reflect and treasure this story as we sing our final song, Silent Night. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this great gift. Help us to trust you like Mary and Joseph. Help us to obey you like the sheep for the shepherds. Help us to praise you like the angels and help us to seek you like the wise men. And finally, help us to share this gift with the entire world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh
Well, friends, thank you so much for spending part of your Christmas with me. I hope you enjoyed this telling of the Christmas story, whether it was your first, first time or your thousandth time hearing it. We hope that you have a wonderful and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.